Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Chris Winter and in this video I've got a number of different Canon DSLRs right here and I thought I could make a little bit of a video to help you decide which one would be good for you and why. Now if you guys didn't know already, I'm actually currently giving away either a Canon 80D or a Sony a6300 to a subscriber, so make sure to hit that subscribe button to enter. And guys, also definitely make sure to check out my new list, the top five best value DSLR cameras. Now, a couple of these cameras make it in, but some don't. So I'll put a link in the description box below if you wanna check it out and you can take a look. But anyway, let's take a look at all of these DSLRs. So to start off with, let's take a look at a couple of the cameras that I've actually got here on my table. And we're starting from the cheapest to the most expensive, starting off with the Canon T3i. Now this camera has been around for probably around four years now and it's been a very popular camera with a lot of people still buying it now. We've also got the brand new Canon T6, which has just been released about two weeks ago. We've got the Canon T6i, which is very similar to the Canon T6s. It's a step above the Canon T6. We've also got the Canon 70D, which has been a very popular camera for a lot of videographers. We've got the brand new Canon 80D, which is the successor to the Canon 70D. And at the end right here, we've got the Canon 7D Mark II, which is probably the most professional out of all of these cameras. And it's built to be a very good sports and wildlife camera. Now, speaking about sports, which one of these cameras would be best for sports photography? Well, for me, it would be the 7D Mark II. Now this camera here is fantastic for sports for a few different reasons. Firstly, it's got an incredibly good autofocus system that works really well for tracking fast moving subjects. It's also got an incredibly fast burst rate and also a high buffer rate so you can take lots of photos in succession. I think it's around about 10 frames per second and it sounds a little bit like this. So you can imagine if you were shooting something like uh, an ice hockey player or something like that which was moving really quickly, you need to have good autofocus and also a high burst rate. Now the Canon 80D is another good camera for sports. It's got an incredibly good autofocus system. It's got a dual pixel autofocus system which works really well and it shoots at around about seven frames per second which sounds a bit like this. Now the 70D also does shoot at seven frames per second and the cameras going down shoot at around about five to three frames per second. So if you're looking for a sports camera, I'd definitely look at the 7D Mark II. So in the same kind of field as sports photography is wildlife photography where your subject is moving very fast. So in the same way, the Canon 7D Mark II is also a very popular wildlife camera as is the 80D and the 70D. Now one thing you do wanna have on a good wildlife camera is a good crop. So all of these cameras right here are APS-C cameras, which means that they have a 1.6 times crop, which means you're gonna be getting a little bit closer to your subject. So overall, it's very similar to the sports photography. Both of these cameras are gonna work really well, but again, you probably do wanna go for the 7D Mark II, not only because it's got really good autofocus and that good high uh, burst rate, but also because it's a little bit tougher than the other cameras. So let's now talk about video. Now, only a few years ago, a lot of DSLRs didn't even have any video capabilities, and if they did, they weren't very good. But these days, it's all changed, and they come with really good video quality and also really good video autofocus. Now to me, the clear winner out of all of these cameras in terms of video work is the Canon 80D. Now this one just got released probably about two weeks ago and it is an absolute winner. It's got an upgraded dual pixel autofocus system which means that its autofocus is incredibly quick and it's also very smooth and cinematic and it's also very reliable. Now the Canon 80D and also the 7D Mark II are the only two cameras out of here that have a headphone jack. And why would you want a headphone jack? Well, it allows you to monitor uh, exactly what you're gonna be hearing, which can be really important if you wanna get the best quality sound. Now, one great feature that all of these cameras have, apart from this one at the end, the 7D Mark II, is a swiveling screen or a fully articulating screen. Now, why would you want something like this? Well, if you're gonna be shooting video, if you're gonna be taking photos from low up or higher up above, you can turn your camera around, which works really, really well, and you can also see, get a better view. Now most of these cameras do have articulating screens, but a couple of them have a special feature, which is a touch screen, which might seem like a bit of a novelty or a gimmick, but it actually works really well, especially if they've got good autofocusing systems. So the Canon 80D and the 70D both have dual pixel autofocus, which is probably the top of the line out of any DSLR, and they both have touch screens. And the T6i also has a touch screen, and it's got a, uh, a hybrid autofocusing system, which works nearly as well as a dual pixel. So its touch screen is also really good, especially if you want to pull focus and see exactly what you want to get into focus. Now there are a few features that some cameras have and that some don't have. Now the Canon T6S for example and the Canon 80D have HDR video mode, which means that you're going to be getting a little bit more improved dynamic range. And the Canon 80D for example also has 
another feature which is 60 frames per second in 1080p mode so you can get some slow motion with high quality. Now the Canon 7D also has that but it doesn't have autofocus in that mode. Other than that the Canon 80D also has a built-in time-lapse mode which is actually really quite cool so you don't actually have to take your time-lapse all the photos and then stitch them together in post it's all done in the camera so overall in terms of video cameras if you're looking for a really good video camera I'd look for pretty much any of these cameras right here they're all going to be very similar the Canon 80D is going to be the best though. So now I want to talk about the best DSLR for beginners. Now, pretty much all of these cameras are going to produce quite similar results, especially in stills mode. And the biggest thing that you're going to actually find in terms of quality is the glass that you put on it, so the lens that you put on the front of it. Now, for beginners, something like a Canon T3i would be a perfect start because it is a very cheap camera. You could probably get this one for around about $300 these days. You can get started and not really worry about, you know, breaking your camera or worrying about getting the absolute best quality. Now, if you do want to do a little bit of video though, I'd probably be looking towards the Canon T6i or T6s. Now, this is a little bit more of a step up in terms of money. It's going to be around about $700 compared to about $300 to $500 for these two cameras right here. But you are going to be getting better image quality and you're also going to be getting better autofocus quality. So the Canon T6i and T6s are probably the way that I would be looking. Now, if you've used a DSLR before and you know your way around it and you don't want to outgrow your camera too quickly, I'd look towards the Canon 70D or the Canon 80D. Now, both of these cameras are going to be fine. Uh, the 70D is going to be around about $200 cheaper than the 80D at the moment. They're both very good, but if you do know you're going to be doing video, I'd be looking towards the 80D. Now, I wouldn't recommend starting off with the Canon 7D Mark II unless you know that you're going to be shooting sports and wildlife at a pretty high level, which you're probably not going to be doing as a beginner because it is a bigger camera. You're also not getting that uh, fully articulating screen or the touch screen, so it can take a little bit more time to get used to. So any of these cameras right here would be good for a beginner. I'd probably look for a used T3i if you want to really get started at a lower price, or look for a Canon T6i or a T6s for probably the best value for that one. So which one's the best camera for you? Well, it's probably going to come down to a few different things. Firstly, your budget. I mean, if you don't have $1,500, to spend on a Canon 7D Mark II body, you're not really gonna be able to buy one, but you might be able to buy a used Canon 70D for around about $600 to $700. Now, is it a bad thing buying a Canon T3i? Not at all, I actually used one for probably three years on my YouTube channel and before then, and it still worked really quite well. And like I said before, pretty much the biggest thing in terms of image quality is actually the lens. So what I like to do, and probably what I'd recommend you to do, is buy a cheaper body, or at least a secondhand body, and save a bit of money on that, and then get a better lens and or maybe a few more lenses uh, so you can get better image quality because these bodies, they only have a certain lifespan and lenses will generally last quite a lot longer and they will also hold their value quite a lot better. So hopefully that helped even just a little bit guys. Now I know that there are more Canon cameras. There are of course full frame cameras and there are a few different models that I've missed out on here. And of course there are other camera brands and they're all pretty good. Uh, but anyway, hopefully this can help you a little bit in deciding which camera will be good for you. Now definitely make sure to check out my top five list of the best value DSLRs. I'll put a link in the description box below under this video and hopefully that can help you a bit more. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. See you next time. Bye.